What's good, you tube nights? Welcome to a uh, long overdue edition of Lords of the Box Office on Lords of the Long Box, where I review movies. Typically, they're comic book or superhero or geeky related movies. But your man Tebow finally got to see New Mutants. Just today was announced in Orange County that they will allow people in limited capacity in theaters. So I went out and saw New Mutants today. It's a little slow day of work. So, you know, I took a little extra long lunch. So, um, working from home anyway. Is anybody going to notice? I hope nobody's watching this now from work. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, lead up to this. So, interesting um, how theaters have changed since uh, COVID and the reopening. Uh, First of all, it was interesting is you didn't buy tickets at the uh, uh, the, the box office, you know, at the ticket counter up front. They said uh, there was a little sign in there that said, go buy your tickets at the concessions. So I said, that's interesting. Uh, so I walked in there. There was two people ahead of me, and then they went off and did their thing. Had a little talk with them. You know, we were, I was just excited to be able to <laughs> see a movie in the theater again. So I was asking them, uh, hey, man, what do you guys see? And they go, unhinged. And I was thinking, Man, Tenet's out, all these other movies, and you chose Unhinged. That is the most 2020 movie I can think of right now because there have been plenty of unhinged people on the internet. But either way, went up there. You know, um, uh, interesting enough, I bought my ticket where I was buying uh, all my stuff, my accoutrement, as you may say. Mm, Baguettes, baguettes, baguettes. Um, so I bought popcorn and what was interesting is, do you want butter on this? And I haven't had that asked to me, I don't know, in 20 years. Uh, cause nowadays they have all these butter stations where you just pile on as much cholesterol as you can. Uh, but at this instance, they were like, you want butter? I was like, uh, sure. And I looked around, I noticed, yeah, there was no butter around. Um, so then he poured my butter in, I grabbed my butter, <laughs> excuse me, my popcorn, uh, Coke and a hot dog. I was like, screw it. I don't even care how much it costs. I'm just happy to be back in the theater. Even for a matinee, a movie ticket, large Coke, hot dog, and a medium popcorn was like 30 something bucks. I didn't even care. I was like, I'm just happy to be back in the theater. Um, so I went into, th and then also at the concession, this was a Regal, by the way. I, normally I go to AMC where I have the AMC uh, All Pass, whatever, where you can pick it online. This was a, a Regal. I didn't have the Regal app, so they just chose you, uh, asked you, well, pick your seat. Uh, and in my theater, there was two other people with me. So I just picked like a totally different aisle, totally different uh, seating because they were smack dab in the middle. I'm not one of those people that needs to be exactly smack dab in the middle. So they were in seats nine and eight, and I was in like seat uh, four. I was off to the side, but... Um, I struck up a conversation with them, which I never do with people in the theater since there's only two of us in there, but you know, I was so excited. Um, so we went and saw, I went and saw new mutants, um, and, uh, the long and delayed new mutants. Um, this movie came out in, well, sort of filming in 2017 uh, and they were hoping for a 2018 release. Uh, we all know the delays, then Disney buying Fox, always pushed it back, pushed it back, the reshoots, and then the COVID shutdown. So it finally got released. So ah, my expectation levels were somewhere between, you know what, low and just happy to be able to see something that is closely resembling a comic book type movie. So I went into it. Obviously, there's no way to stay away from all the reviews that have been coming out over the last uh, weeks about New Mutants. So obviously, it has a really low Rotten Tomato score. User score is not so bad. So, you know, I came in with lowered expectations. So um, the opening scene, obviously, is this. Oh, by the way, this is a non-spoiler review. I'll try not to spoil as much as I can. Um, basically, if you guys know, for those who are new to the channel and think this is just a movie review... We are a comic book channel as well. So this is based off of the New Mutants, which is created by Bob McLeod and Chris Claremont and the New Mutants graphic novel. Um, this was an interesting topic to tackle because the New Mutants comic, when it came out, especially the graphic novel, really was a departure from what Marvel Mutants had been up to then. This comic was not a happy-go-lucky comic when you have a bunch of teens involved. They all come from really tragic backgrounds. Uh, if you think about Sam Guthrie, who left a, who kind of uh, blew up a mine because his powers just emerged, Sunspot with the same thing on a soccer field. 
uh, Rain Sinclair. So basically, the characters are Rain Sinclair, which is Wolf's Bane, uh, Roberto da Costa, which is Sunspot, Sam Guthrie, who's Cannonball, um, Danny Moonstar, who, who is, I forgot what her code name is. And they replaced Karma, which was the Vietnamese character in the original New Mutants car- uh, comic book, with Magic, or excuse me, Ileana Rasputin, although they don't call her by her last name in this movie. Interesting way to put her into this, but basically this is based on the Bill Sienkiewicz comic book about the demon bear. So the movie is probably told from, it is told from the perspective of Danny Moonstar because it, obviously the demon bear is from her kind of mythos. So uh, as the movie goes on, they she you, you've seen the first six minutes, they've showed it all over the place. She wakes up and she's in this, I guess all you can call it is a psych ward, but eventually she wakes up and she finds she's uh, being uh, told by a doctor that, hey, we're putting you here for your own safety. We study mutants to make sure that you guys can control your powers and you're here with other people. So she gets introduced to the other characters who apparently uh, can't control their powers. And throughout the first two part acts of the film, it's alluded to that there is another uh, level that they can reach Uh, Once they show they can control their powers here, which obviously is a little Easter egg nod that they you think is Xavier School of Gifted Youngsters, where you would think you know where all young new mutants would come from. In the comic books, the new mutants are uh, in the Xavier School. In this one, we don't know yet. I don't want to give away too much, but you know that's the non-spoiler part. So um, there are some interesting things that happen that you don't know if is it real, is it a dream, and you've seen him in the trailer, and essentially it, it, you start finding out why and where these things are happening and, and how these kids deal with it. Um, I've seen comparisons to where people said this film is like The Breakfast Club, um, kind of. It is The Breakfast Club without any of John Hughes' talent, heart, and humor in it at all whatsoever uh if you want to put it that way there's one little scene that takes place it's like a maybe two minute scene where you see a bit of happiness but the rest of it is pretty dark uh all the characters backstories are told at one point or another and they're all pretty dark uh i can see what the director josh boone was trying to do i think his name is josh boone i know his last name is boone i always confuse joss and joss (laughs) whedon but anyway I see what Boone was trying to do uh, in saying it's a horror movie and it's so people have compared it also Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Dream Warriors. So it's a little bit of that. It's a little bit of Breakfast Club, but it's not all the way Breakfast Club and it's not all the way Dream Warriors because it's not really scary and it doesn't have the heart and humor uh, that Breakfast Club has. Obviously, the teenagers do have kind of these tragic backgrounds and they come together. Well, they don't really. Okay, they come together to fight a common foe. Um, and I will say, man, uh, the reviews have said the, the movie is a bit middling, uh, middling, meaning it just kind of wanders around. It's true. The first two acts are a bit of a slog. It is a bit slow. Uh, the last act really builds up. Okay. Nicely. Uh, and you get some cool stuff at the very end. I will say hands down the pie. Best part of the film is Ileana Rasputin. Uh, magic. Uh, she is badass. And for the most part, if you read New Mutants comics, their characters are pretty true to their personalities, at least in the early New Mutants comics, as far as how they act. Uh, Sam Guthrie is pretty cool. R- uh, Roberto uh, da Costa was kind of the way I guess he's supposed to be. In the, he's kind of a he's a bit of a douchey character because he comes from a rich family. Uh, can I say? Oh, I just said douchey. Um, but yeah, magic was added in because obviously karma wasn't used. I don't know why karma was a cool character. Um, but the scenes with magic are pretty badass. And in, during the third act, there's a line that Ileana says that puts a smile on your face. I will just say that, uh, it's a bit corny. You see it coming a mile away, but if you're a comic book fan, you'll like, you'll appreciate it. There's also some nods from, uh, obviously they, they actually name drop the X-Men straight up and professor x um and toward the reveal at the end because that throughout the film there's a doctor and this film is a very small cast it's literally those kids and one doctor inside this hospital 
um, uh, Dr. Reyes. And she keeps on referring to as um, her superiors or her bosses. Uh, this is what they want. And she gets these cryptic messages every now and then, but they don't really say who they're from. Or you don't see a, a face or a voice to it. What's the reveal of when they finally find out who it is, is a nod to uh, the end of another X-Men movie and a end credit scene. That's all I'll say. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's, it's a, it's a nod to an X-Men villain. Um, so what's sad is this is the 13th X-Men film, uh, from the Fox franchise or excuse me, X, uh, Fox film from the X-Men franchise and the last one. Um, so originally this was, uh, this was wanted to be a three film trilogy. At least that's what the director had pitched to Simon Kinberg, who was the producer of the film. Uh, speaking of producer credits, at the end of the film, uh, they give special thanks to Chris Claremont and Bob McLeod, and they misspelled his name. It's just it, not good at all. Bob McLeod made some uh, comments about that on social media. Um, but I don't want to get this go on too far along, because it's, it's kind of hard to go even further without giving any more spoilers to it. So the pros... Uh, the characters are pretty close to their counterparts in the comic book as far as the personalities are and somewhat to their powers, too. They don't really drop their code names here and there. They will, though. Magic, by far, is the best thing of the movie, although the actress's Russian accent is a little... Eh, I'll just say that. Um, uh, the other actors did a fine job. Dr. Reyes was a, a bit wooden, um, they should have, I would like to see more development on Dr. Reyes on why or how she was doing all this, but it's too bad. We didn't get to see what Josh Boone's trilogy was. Cause a lot of times we just, um, we kind of pigeon toe a director into one film when their, when their original vision was to see it over a trilogy to see what they were eventually tell the story. So too bad. we we'll probably won't see it, but, uh, you know, once Kevin Feige gets his hands on it. It'll probably be better like he normally does. But uh, as far as we like to do on this channel, we like to give it a CGC rating. Uh, my CGC grade is I'm torn between like a 7.5 to maybe an 8.0. Nobody signed it because nobody wanted to be part of this project. So it is a blue label. So, uh, so I give it a 7.5 on the CGC grade label, which is a VF. Uh, very fine. It has a lot of uh, dings on the cover. Overall, maybe off-white pages, maybe tan page, uh, cream pages. Um, so yeah, it's 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 the, the the cons, the pros. Do they outweigh the cons? I think so. I mean, I just think there wasn't enough going on in the first two thirds of the movie. Uh, I mean, the final, you know, the th third act of the film. I mean, it's only ninety minutes long, so really, you got a thirty-minute opening act, second act is sort of thirty minutes, and the last act's thirty minutes. Not much time to get into there. This film, well, beg, if there are hardcore fans of it, this is the type of film that people will beg for a boon cut, which seems to be all the rage now with the Snyder cut, the Iyer cut, the, the Iyer cut for Suicide Squad. Since this film has been reshot so many times, and there's, I mean, there's probably something else there, but we're never probably going to see his uh, trilogy come to fruition. Um, so there it is. It's, it's I, I don't know. I literally just saw it, so it's I'm, I'm processing it, and it's this... It's meh. It's, it's, it's meh. It's, it's there. It's better than Dark Phoenix. I'll say that, which the, the bar was set incredibly low with Dark Phoenix. Um, uh, Age of Apocalypse, probably better. Um, but, you know, it's kind of sad to think Fox went out on a whimper with Dark Phoenix and then New Mutants and then uh, probably best, for the best, right? Uh, number 13, lucky number 13 and New Mutants was the 13th film. So there you go. Uh, what I will say, though, is... If you're a comic book fan, if you're a New Mutants fan, go see it. And the reason why is take go see it just so you can make your own decision on it. And more so to help out the studio, not the studios, but the crews that made this film. You know, let's try to get, you know, all the a lot of people put a lot of hard work on it. Sit through the credits and see how many people made this film. Take your money and at least, you know, try to support it because we try to always support films, especially comic book films on this channel. So see it for yourself. Make your own judgment. But for me, it's 7.5. You can spend, you can right now during COVID, there's not much to do. You can, there's, you know what? Go see it because you get to sit in a nice air conditioned movie theater for a good hour and a half, two hours 
and you get to just get your minds up. And that's the more important thing right now. I think people are just stuck at home. If you're watching news cycles, there's just so much crap on the news right now. Get your mind off of things. And that's what movies do. Movies let us escape reality for a couple hours so we can just get our minds off of things. So if I, in my humble opinion, 7.5, it should be enough reason for you to go out and see it. Go see a matinee. Go see it at night, whatever. I mean, there's social distancing involved. I had no problems wearing a mask in the theater, even though I wear glasses when I watch a movie. They, they say if you're eating or drinking, you don't have to wear a mask. If you're sitting far apart, just be careful, guys. Use common sense. If you don't feel safe or you have underlying conditions, maybe you shouldn't go to a theater. But if you're healthy and you take the proper precautions, go out there and let's support the film industry and so they can come back and give us all the movies that we want to see. So... Until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.